I've had a lot of requests to test floor jacks. So the question is, is that $100 floor jack just as good as the one that costs $1,000? Let's find out. In a first test, we'll find out the max capacity of each jack. Then we'll see how many pumps it takes to reach full height. We'll see how well the wheels roll with 1,500 pounds of weight on top of the jack. Then we'll see if the jacks can hold up 3,500 pounds for 24 hours. At a price of only $93, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is this black jack, which is made by Torin and costs right at $93. All the jacks we'll be testing have a 3-ton capacity. Right out of the box, the handle on the black jack is split and very loose. A safety bypass system prevents overloading and ensures safe operation. We're going to test that. The handle rotates 360 degrees. The minimum height without the adapter is 5.75 inches. To achieve maximum lifting height, you'll have to use an extension adapter which has a 2.5 ton maximum capacity. Without the adapter in place, the maximum lifting height is 17 and 5 16 inches. The advertised maximum height is 20 and 7 8 inches, but it actually did better than that at 21 inches. If the jack is low on oil, the port to add oil is pretty easy to access. We'll go over how to know when your jack needs oil and how to add oil later in the video. Jacks with a short handle typically take more pumps to achieve maximum height. Without a load on the jack, I had to pump the jack 47 times to reach maximum height. Unfortunately, the jack does not return all the way to the home position without some assistance. And the black jack is very light at only 44 pounds. I put together this tester to measure the maximum lifting capacity of each jack. The display on the left will keep track of the maximum downward pressure I'm applying to the jack handle, and the display on the right will let us know the maximum lifting capacity. If you need to lift 3 tons or 6,000 pounds, you're going to have to apply a lot of downward pressure with the blackjack. I had to apply 132.5 pounds of pressure on the handle to make it to approximately 6,000 pounds. And the blackjack topped out at 6,336 pounds before the jack's bypass valve began releasing pressure. After five minutes, the pressure dropped by 327 pounds. At a price of $139, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Moss Dam. The Moss Dam is a 310 low profile jack with a speedy lift. The advertised minimum height is 3 and 1 8 inches. Maximum height 19 and 3 quarter inches. After bolting the handle together, there's a bolt in the jack handle that has to be backed out in order to fully seat the jack handle into position. Once the handle's in place, tightening the bolt keeps the handle in position. And the Moss Dam has one grease fitting and it's located just above the lift arm shaft. A quick look at the Moss Dam and you could tell that it was built on a Monday. The jack lift arm is not properly aligned and it badly favors one side. There's also several areas on the jack where the welds weren't completed. Other welds are just very sloppy. The welds will probably never fail, but then again, you're counting on a jack to lift a dangerous amount of weight. So why settle when you can buy a jack that's put together better? The minimum height on the Moss Dam is right at three inches. If you ever need to add jack oil, you'll have to remove four screws. The port to add jack oil is very easy to reach. And the Moss Dam made it to full lifting height at only 6.3 pumps compared to 47 pumps for the black jack. And the Moss Dam made it to just under 20 inches as advertised. And the lift arm returned to the home position without any help. And the Moss Dam's just over 30 pounds heavier than the black jack at 75 pounds. To reach 3 tons of lift, you'll have to apply very close to 98 pounds of pressure on the handle. The Moss Dam easily beat its 3 ton rating, making it to 7,269 pounds. After 5 minutes, the Moss Dam is down to 6,910 pounds, so it's easily beating its 3 ton rating. At a price of $160 or $21 more than the Moss Dam is this Pittsburgh brand. Other than the color and the stickers, the Pittsburgh looks almost the same as the Moss Dam. There's a grease fitting in the same location just over the lift arm shaft. There are some minor differences like the jack handle using a lock clip instead of a bolt. Maybe both jacks are built in the same factory or maybe both brands source their parts from the same location. Either way, the Pittsburgh probably wasn't built on a Monday as it has a much better build quality. The lift arm is properly aligned and centered. No gaps or seams in the welds and the welds look much better. I seriously doubt that the welds will ever be a point of failure on this jack. And the minimum height is just over 3 inches with the Pittsburgh. And it takes 6.3 pumps on the handle to reach full height with the Pittsburgh, which is very close to the same as the Moss Dam. And the Pittsburgh made it to pretty much the same height as the Moss Dam at just under 20 inches. No problem returning to the home position without any help. And the Pittsburgh's just 1 pound heavier than the Moss Dam at 76 pounds. The handle pressure on the Pittsburgh was almost the same as the Mass Dam at 97 pounds to achieve 6,000 pounds of lift. And the Pittsburgh performed a little bit better on the Jack Dyno, making it to 7,301 pounds before the bypass engaged. After five minutes, the Pittsburgh dropped to 6,982 pounds or down just 319 pounds. So that's 40 pounds better than the Moss Dam. At a price of $179 is this Husky brand. And the Husky looks almost the same as the Mass Dam and the Pittsburgh. The jack handle uses a bolt instead of a lock clip just like the Mass Dam. There's a grease fitting in the same location just over the lift arm shaft. 
The welds on the Husky are a little bit sloppy, but much better than the Mass Dam. The Husky claims a minimum lift height of only 3 inches, and it came in right at 3 inches. The Mass Dam in the Pittsburgh takes 6.3 pumps to reach full height, and the Husky takes 7.5. And the Husky made it right at 20 inches. And the Husky weighs the same as the Pittsburgh at 76 pounds. And the Husky made it to just over 6,000 pounds of pressure with 92.5 pounds of downward pressure on the jack handle, which is the best yet. And the Husky topped out at 7,042 pounds before the bypass valve began releasing pressure. After five minutes of trying to hang on, the Husky dropped 261 pounds down to 6,781 pounds, the best yet. At a price of $280 is this Daytona brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. The model we'll be testing is the DJ3000, which is designed to compete against the Snap-on. The three-ton Daytona jack is a super-duty, high-performance, professional-grade jack that's designed to compete against the Snap-on. The jack handle is secured in the handle socket with a locking spring pin, which makes removing and installing the handle a very fast process. The lift arm is centered and properly aligned. The craftsmanship with the Daytona is the best yet. The welds look great, and there aren't any gaps or sloppy work. Maybe it was built on a Wednesday. The Daytona has five grease fittings, two for the front wheels, the lift arm shaft, and the handle socket shaft also has two fittings. The lowest the Daytona will go is four inches compared to one inch lower for the Husky. And the jack not only lifts higher than all the other brands, it does so with less handle pumps at only 4.2. And the Daytona is very close to 23 and a quarter inches at full height. No problem with the lift arm returning to the home position without help. All the moving parts in the jack received a very generous helping of grease. This thing is slick. And Daytona is a lot heavier than the other jacks at 103 pounds. I quickly lift jack is nice, but it does take more effort on the user's part. 108.5 pounds to reach 6,000 pounds of pressure, or about 11.5 pounds more than the Husky. And the Daytona made it to 6,855 pounds, or about 450 pounds less than the liter. After five minutes, the Daytona gave up 310 pounds, or about 50 pounds more than the Husky. Also the price of $280, the same price as the Daytona, is this Archon Professional Tools brand. Unlike the other jacks, the Archon is made of aluminum. Instead of using welds, the Archon is bolted together. You can easily reach the oil port without any disassembly. There aren't any grease fittings on the Archon, but most of the moving parts have been greased. Just like the Daytona, the minimum height is very close to 4 inches. The build quality is excellent, and the lift arm is centered and properly aligned. Just like the Daytona, the minimum height is very close to 4 inches. And the jack made it to its full height in 6.5 pumps, which is very close to the same as the Mass Dam and the Pittsburgh. No problem returning to the home position. The maximum height for the Arcan is very close to 19.5 inches. And the Arcan is very light at only 55 pounds. The aluminum Arcan is not only light, it's relatively easy to use at 97 pounds to reach 3 tons of lift. And the Arcan made it to 7,029 pounds, which is within 300 pounds of the liter. After 5 minutes, the Arcan is only down 195 pounds, the best yet. At a price of $340 is this Esco brand. The handle is bent and the halves won't go together, so I'll have to straighten it out. Once the jack handle is in place, the bolt has to line up with the slot in the jack handle. All of the other jacks have metal wheels, but the Esco's wheels are plastic. The rear caster in the Esco is pretty stiff for about half of a rotation. The lowest the Esco will go is 3.75 inches. The welds in the Esco look pretty good, but they're not quite as good as the Daytona. The plastic cover on the Esco can be removed without tools to gain access to the oil port. There aren't any grease fittings on the Esco. The lift arm assembly is properly aligned, and it takes 9.5 handle jack pumps with the Esco to reach full height. With the quick lift pedal, it takes 17 pumps to reach full height, and the Esco made it to 20.25 inches at maximum height. And the Esco is the second heaviest jack yet at 87 pounds. And the Esco requires quite a bit of effort to reach 3 tons at 109 pounds, which is almost the same as the Daytona. And the Esco is maxed out at 6,499 pounds, or about 800 pounds less than the liter. And the Esco only gave up 207 pounds after 5 minutes. At a price of $1,000 before taxes and shipping and handling is this Snap-on brand. Just like the Daytona, the jack handle is secured in the handle socket with a locking spring pin. The Snap-on also has five grease points, two for the wheels, one for the lift arm, and two for the handle socket shaft. As you'd expect with a $1,000 jack, the welds look great and it looks like a professional welder went to work on this one. Everything under the hood on the Snap-on looks the same as the Daytona. However, a side-by-side -side view and you can see a few differences. The Snap-on's wheels are larger at 4.2 inches compared to 3.5 for the Daytona. The Snap-on has a larger saddle and the frame looks a little bit different. And the Snap-on won't go any lower than 4 inches. And it took very close to 4.2 pumps on the jack handle to reach full height, the same as the Daytona. And the Snap-on offers the highest lift yet at 24 inches or 3 quarters of an inch better than the Daytona. And there's no issues returning to the home position. And the Snap-on's the heaviest yet at 110 pounds compared to 103 for the Daytona. The quick lift design of the Snap-on requires quite a bit of 
effort for the user at 105 pounds to reach 3 tons. And the Snap-on almost made it to 7,300 pounds before offloading pressure. After 5 minutes, the Snap-on dropped by 304 pounds, which is very close to the same as the Daytona. If weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Blackjack is the lightest at 44 pounds. The Arcan is also very light at 55 pounds, Mastam 75, Pittsburgh and Husky 76 pounds. When it comes to the lowest lift height, the Mastam and the Husky have the advantage at 3 inches. The Pittsburgh's at 3.38 inches and Esco 3.75. The Snap-on offers the highest lift at 24 inches. The Daytona is at 23.25, Blackjack 21, Esco 20.25, and Husky 20 inches. If you're looking for a jack stand that requires the least amount of effort on the jack handle, the Husky came out on top at 92.5 pounds. As a jack is lifting an object, it needs to reposition itself by rolling forward to stay under the object. If the wheels don't move freely, there's a risk that the jack could slide out from under the object that it's lifting. Unfortunately, I've had this happen a couple times with poor quality jacks. Wheel size can make a huge difference when it comes to jack performance. And the Snap-on has the largest front wheels with a diameter of 4.2 inches. Daytona 3.25, Blackjack 3, and Esco 2.95 inches. Let's see if the large wheels help in the next test. I'll first place the jack under the differential and then lift both wheels off the ground. Then I'll see how much force it takes for the jack wheels to roll forward with approximately 1,500 pounds on the jack. Using a nice controlled push, it took 141 pounds of force to get the blackjack rolling 3 inches. During the push, the left rear caster wheel is off the ground and the frame of the blackjack is twisting quite a bit. The left rear caster wheel seems to have a bit of camber. And the mass dam jack performed quite a bit better than the blackjack rolling at 124.5 pounds. All four wheels stayed on the ground during the test. And the Pittsburgh performed just a little bit better than the mass dam at 120.5 pounds. The jack stayed on all four wheels during the test. And the Husky performed by far the best yet at 105 pounds or 15 pounds better than the Pittsburgh. All four wheels maintain ground contact. The Arcan has larger front wheels than the Husky and that seems to have helped. 98 pounds to move into the lead over the Husky. And the Esco has larger front wheels than the Arcan, but they're made of plastic. And it took 100.5 pounds to get the Esco to move forward about 3 inches. And the rear caster wheel isn't providing all that much support. And the Daytona has 3.25 inch wheels, the largest yet. And the Daytona moves into the lead over the Arcan at 88.5 pounds. All four wheels stayed on the ground during the test. And the Snap-on has the largest front wheels in the lineup at 3.25 inches. And the Snap-on takes the lead from the Daytona at 81 pounds. All four wheels maintain good ground contact. A jack that rolls easily is not only easier to maneuver, it's also more likely to reposition itself safely as needed as a heavy object is being lifted. And a snap-on with the large wheels came out on top at 81 pounds. Daytona also performed well at 88, Arcan 98, and Esco 100.5 pounds. Most of the jacks reach full lift height and under 10 pumps without a load and with the benefit of having a full range of motion. Let's see how many pumps it takes to lift the back of the pickup truck to the jack's maximum height. I'll raise the jack handle until it makes contact with the rear quarter panel and I'll press the jack handle downward until it bottoms out. With a full range of motion and with Without a load, the blackjack needed 47 pumps. In this test lifting the truck, the blackjack needed 58 pumps or an extra 11 pumps. And the mass dam only needed 6.3 pumps without a load. With a limited range of motion for the jack handle, the mass dam needed 30 pumps or about half as many as the blackjack. The Pittsburgh looks and performs about the same as the mass dam in the previous test and it performed about the same in this test at 31 pumps. And the Husky performed the same as the Pittsburgh at 31 pumps in this test. And the lightweight Arcan needs 6.5 pumps without a load. In this test, the Arcan needed 35 pumps or 4 more pumps compared to the Pittsburgh and the Husky. And the Esco needs 9.5 pumps to reach full height without a load. In this test, the Esco needs 44 pumps or 13 more than the Pittsburgh and the Husky. And the Daytona only needs 4.3 pumps without a load. In this test, the Daytona took 28 pumps to reach 23.25 inches compared to 31 pumps for the Pittsburgh and the Husky to reach 19.75 inches. Just like the Daytona, the Snap-on also needs 28 pumps to reach full height. However, the Snap-on offers an extra 3 quarters of an inch of clearance. Several things impact jack performance, including hydraulic cylinder design and handle range of motion. And the Snap-on and the Daytona came out on top at 28 pumps. The mass dam finished in third at 30, Pittsburgh and Husky, 31 pumps. The height of a jack's frame as well as the handle range of motion can have a huge impact on jack reach. So let's see how much reach each jack offers at 7 and 3 quarter inches of clearance. And the highest point on the black jack's frame is 6 inches, but the jack handle tilts upward and offers limited range of motion. And 22 inches is as far as the jack will go before the handle range of motion becomes a problem. And the highest point of the mass dam is 6.3 inches. The jack handle can be lowered to around 5 inches above the ground. And the mass dam is able to function just fine at 50 inches of reach. The Pittsburgh is almost identical to the mass dam. And the Pittsburgh performed just fine at 50 inches. The Husky also has plenty of handle travel at 7.75 inches of clearance. No problem with 50 inches of reach. The highest point of the Daytona is 7 inches, so it's a little bit taller than the other brands. The Daytona's jack handle offers a great range of motion. Ocean, no issues at 50 inches. 
The highest point of the Arcan's frame is 6.5 inches. And the Arcan performed almost as good as the others on this test at 49 inches of reach. The highest point of the Esco's frame is right at 7 inches. However, the handle tilts upward and really limits the jack's reach, 30 inches. The highest point on the Snap-on's frame is right at 6.8 inches. And the Snap-on performed very well in this test at 50 inches. If you're looking for a jack that offers good low clearance reach, most of the brands offer at least 50 inches of reach at 7.75 inches of clearance. Handle travel prevented the Arcan, Blackjack, and the Esco from reaching 50 inches on this test. A poor quality or worn out jack won't hold pressure. Let's see if the jacks can hold up these hay balers for 24 hours. The balers weigh around 7,000 pounds each. So each jack will be supporting one side of the baler or about 3,500 pounds each. And the Blackjack, Mastem, Pittsburgh, and Husky survived a 24 hour test without a problem. Let's move on to the next four jacks to see how they perform. And the Archon, Esco, Daytona, and Snap-on held up just fine. While the jacks did survive the 24-hour test, I always recommend jack stands before crawling under an object that's supported by a jack. Some jacks seem to really struggle, allowing for a smooth release of pressure. I tested all the brands on the hay baler, and they all performed just fine, allowing for a smooth control release of the weight. You can tell when the jack is low on oil, when the pump stroke feels spongy, or the jack won't lift all the way. While other products may work, recommend using an oil specifically designed for a jack. To add oil, the first step is to lower the jack to the home position. Remove the oil fill plug and make sure the oil is at the top of the hydraulic cylinder. The next step is to apply pressure to the saddle and quickly pump the handle several times. Check the oil fill level again and top off with hydraulic oil if it's needed. The jack should be good to go, just give it a test. Assessing the quality of the jacks, including things like weld quality and alignment of parts, is highly subjective. The Arcan and the Snap-on received the highest possible rating of 1. The Daytona also received a very good rating of 1.5. If I had to choose just one jack, I would definitely go with the Daytona when you consider the value, price, as well as the performance. I also like the Husky and the Pittsburgh quite a bit. I would go with the least expensive of the two, but I would also want to check the weld quality before I made the purchase. Finally, if you're looking for something really light, I really like the Arcan. It's a very nice jack. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.